We're live. Hello, everyone. I am Verde Arbusto. This is the Schumann Resonance Harmonics channel on Facebook and on YouTube. <clears throat> Pardon me. And I would like to thank you all for being here. Um, it is, uh, oh, I think we're now in the, the, the Monday portion of the week. Um, it's like the 9th of November. Uh, oh, good golly, time is flying. Um, and uh, so this is um, uh, a place where, if you're new here, this is where um, I am very technically inclined to talk about and describe the Schumann resonance harmonics, the Schumann resonances, the harmonics uh, thereof, uh, the harmonics produced by the uh, Schumann resonances. And it's important to note here that when I talk about harmonics, it's not just about those produced by the Schumann resonances, which we know of as our fundamentals of 7.8, <clears throat> excuse me, of approximately 14.1, uh, comma, approximately 20.7, comma, approximately 33, I think is our next one, um, so on and so forth. Uh, so the harmonics appearing on the Schumann resonance spectrogram are often harmonics of environmental influences. And this is important for us to remember, at least in my, um, my class here, that the harmonics include the, the artifacts of other um, har harmonics of other things, uh, such as the, the domestic power supply, local machinery, um, etc. And that's part of what we do here is try to deserf, decipher, discern and decipher the, um, the artifacts that are found on the uh, the Schumann resonances, uh, the the Schumann resonance uh, spectrograms and the charts and the graphs and and um, etc. Uh, basically, what are we looking at when we're when we're looking at the um, the reports, which are the spectrogram? Like I said, the spectrogram and those of the twelve dependencies. What are we looking at? What's the true signal? What what is happening in the the greater environment versus what is happening local? All right. So um, the uh, the stated clear intention of this um, this this lesson this section <clears throat> excuse me is that I am dealing with the uh, the spectrogram as a whole. The spectrogram, you know, of of this uh, the spectrogram in general. What is it? What is spectrography? Spe spectrography. Okay, I've gone through these in other videos. Um, what is the spectrogram of the Schumann? How do you read it? What's there? Uh, what what is the 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 data? What is the spectrum of the data being presented? There are, as I think I have shown, there are spectrograms on a number of different signals uh, based on the parameters that have been input uh, into the, um, the machinery. All right. So one of the things that, that we're looking at, not only with Tomsk, but also other places, is how is the data acquired? What is the data acquisition uh pathway um <clears throat> excuse me so in uh, uh, if i had the specifics of tomsk which is in russia uh siberia specifically 
If I had the specifics of exactly the machinery and the components used in Tomsk, I would be presenting those. Okay, it, I just want to have that as a disclaimer, as something that would be obvious enough that if I had that, I would be presenting that. Okay, first and foremost. Now, that withstanding, the fact I don't have that, that data and that information um, is, uh, it's a thing. Okay, it's significant in itself. However, over and above that, if I did have that and presented all of that, um, at, at any rate, independently of that, I would still be presenting you the information from other antenna operators. So I have given a few, I don't know, two that I can think of. One's Japanese, one's, one was uh, Greek. I think there was a Mexican uh, antenna maker in there at some point I threw in there. Um, or at least pictures of the installation in Mexico where the where the uh, the antenna tower, the protective, you know, uh, outbuilding that they have is. So at least you can get a picture of how remote the uh, the antenna outbuilding is. Um, all right. So that is my this is kind of long uh, sort of long introduction here into what the material is. You know, I'm sort of covering. I'm I'm just giving a preference. I'm I'm covering what I've already gone over. This is an important thing in case you're new here or you haven't seen the other part A's and part B's. This is part C going on into this. So I have talked about the um, the Schumann resonance uh, spectrogram here. This, this is a cross section of uh, yesterday's anyway. Um, so I have a visual aid. The, uh, the spectrogram here is the top part uh, it's it's oriented zero at the top, and then it comes down here to 40 hertz. Um, and th at this one at Tomsk, there's no decibel chart. This right here is is your decibel reading chart. Okay, Tomsk doesn't have that. What they do have are these flavor variations. Um, you you might say color variations. I would say sure. Flavor variations is what you mean, <laughs> like ice cream, if you will. <clears throat> Excuse me. So they're they're at at Tomsk. They're not giving you this decibel reading chart. You have this here amplitude. This is the the amplitude. I know it is because I cut this out. Um, and this is just from the other day, uh, like I stated. So one of the things is when we're trying to interpret. The, the, the data, um, the, the acquisition um, on this here signal, what are we looking at? Okay. And the way that Tomsk arranges theirs is in such a way that it has the dependencies underneath it. But what we're looking at here is this is the dependency of decibels. Okay. So when we're looking at this spectrogram here, which is not from Tomsk, this is the one that's in the article. This is actually from Italy. Um, you know, you see a different set of um, parameters, different colors going on. That's why when I do this, I put these together so you can see it's not a different reading from Tom's. It's a different place altogether. Um, and so uh, uh, one of the stated clear intentions of this here. Um, the section, in general, this uh, this video specifically, is to talk about the uh, the spectrograms and, and what are you looking at in that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, so without going more into the the article itself, which it's probably about time that I do, um, uh, I will just show you really quickly that this is. This is Hertz, 50 Hertz, and that is the gentleman's name, Hertz, H-E-R-T-Z. It's always pluralized. It's like a, how did I phrase that? It's like an abusive relationship. There's never one hurt. It's the guy's name. You always have to pluralize it. It's Hertz. You couldn't have one hurt of a frequency. That makes no sense because it's a time 
uh, variation cycle per second. You know, there's hertz because there's cycles. <laughs> okay, hopefully it's a good reminder for y'all. <clears throat> okay, so, um, all right, so I'm giving a comparison. This is the, the latest Schumann resonance spectrogram, or it was yesterday. This is full color dealio here is what everyone calls the Schumann. You know, um, I've gone over this, I'm going over here again. This one single chart here, the spectrogram, is often what people pull out in the New Age community. They don't know what they're doing, don't know what they're talking about. Full of hot air, full of SHI toothpick, um, or SHI umbrella, sorry. Uh, SH1 umbrella, they're full of that, um, the effluent word beginning with S. Um, and, and this is what they pull out. Oh, the, you know, the Schumann, the, the, the earth is going to flatline or the earth stopped or, you know, the earth is dead and we don't know it. Or, I don't know, whatever. They look at this and they come up with all kinds of wacky, whack job theories based on lack of information of what, what they're looking at. Okay, so that's why it's important. That's what we're talking about here. And just in my teaching model here, without going into the furthermore of the text, um, I think I may have to actually, I, I think, because of where I'm at in this, I'm going to, um, this is sort of a refle refresher class in this. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And so I, I may actually just kind of, before I even go into the lesson, uh, you know, kind of, cut this off as a, you know, sort of a, another look at the uh, spectrogram, um, you know, pound for pound, what are we looking at, one from the other, you know, one, one uh, versus the other, uh, you know, as a, as, a, as a comparison, you know, how, do, how you know, this is uh, an apples to apples comparison. When I have shown in the past, um, the actually, hold on. Let me get into the, uh, there I am, all right, done a bunch of talking, that's without actually showing myself, which is fine enough, um, but it's like my guides told me that if you're going to do a lot of talking and soliloquizing, um, show your face, um, just because you need to, and that's why I have this here on the, um, <clears throat> my, uh, my screen here so that I can see myself talking. It's kind of a mirror. It's part of my personal growth and development in doing these is that I'm right here with you. I'm learning, you know, even though I'm presenting this, I'm learning, still learning a lot of this. Um, there's a lot of material. Uh, so when I'm doing these um, for myself, I, I really need to uh, kind of view myself on the screen talking as it's as if I'm talking to an audience. I, I kind of really need that rather than dead air. And, um, you know, I, as a viewer, appreciate seeing the, the, the narrator sometimes, maybe not the whole thing. Um, you know, I can understand where you have something on the screen, you need a voiceover. Um, but I personally kind of, you know, really need a face to connect to, you know, I think Wages World is the only exception that, you know, but pretty much if the the video host is not, I guess, willing to go up, you know, be there a face, it's like, well, okay, who are you? I don't know. I, just, I, don't, I don't know. You know, I, and, you know, or maybe the converse is I have a lot more respect for the, the hosts and I believe them maybe more when they're willing to put their face out there. <clears throat> um, anyway, so that said, so anyway, so that's just my own personal thing. Do it as you want. So, uh, um, so, all right. So class, you know, there's a few of you I know that are here every day that, you know, that I make a video every time and with my live stream, um, as you're able, you know, I know that if you're not there, uh, in comments, you're there in spirit. All right, so we're 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 talking about this great big issue of the the uh, uh, the spectrum. Um, uh, what do you call it? The uh, the the spectrogram. There you go. Spectrum analyzer. Uh, uh, the spectrograph creates a spectrogram. All right. <clears throat> so 
these um these are three examples of of uh, the spectrogram spectrograms that are presented within um excuse me so of course the first one is the Schumann resonance is the one from Tom's that we're all familiar with okay now this one here and this one here the two the bottom and the top ones here okay these are from the same article here by um Pier Luigi Poggi, Poggi, um, uh, IW. This is a shortwave. It's shortwave uh, radio license uh, number, if I'm not mistaken. Um, uh, so he gives it for uh, um, this one here. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Um, I'd like to know for sure, uh, but uh, in lieu of that. Uh, Shortwave license, shortwave broadcasting license. All right. Um, all right. So before I get into the article here, which I'm going to, this is still, I'm, I'm, I'm on part C of this particular article. And I still haven't even really got into it from this antenna maker. This is a very long, drawn out uh, uh, um, introduction, if you will, to this article. I'm like a big tease, you know, it's three videos of teasing you on this, you know, eventually I'll get to Boogie, you know, you'll, you'll see it, you know, part Z. I mean to get to it. I'm really going to this time. Um, <laughs> next time. I mean, um, uh, so <laughs> part Z Zeta. Um, Anyway, so, um, you know, so it's, it's important because we're talking about the spectrogram in general. And it's like, ah, pfft, on gold, the, the article anyway. I'm just talking about the spectrograms. You know, you just happen to have a couple great juicy examples. Thanks. That's what you got going for you. All right. So anyway, um, <clears throat> I digress severely. Um, so, uh, so we're marking, you know, it's important to know what you're looking at. Where is the frequency? All right. So on Tom's, we already know that. We got um, our frequencies on the, you know, I butchered up this spectro uh, as part of the learning. Um, there we go. All right, so even though it's not here in this particular, um, uh, this particular, you know, version of it, okay, we know that the frequency here starts at zero at the top and then it goes to the bottom. Okay, so this one here on the right hand side, you know, follow the dancing uh, across. This is 50 at, at, at the top. Okay, topper starts at zero and goes to the top, you know, top ish. I think it peaks out at 100. I'm not sure if I remember correctly the article. Um, this one peaks out at a oh, 100. All right, so we have. 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Right. This is a negative, what this says is negative 50 plus 50 here. And this is a frequency, uh, our line, see that says decibel there? If you can see it, I don't know if you can see it. Right. Negative 100, it looks like negative 20. All right, so uh, you'll notice that, that this is a line graph here, okay? This is the decibel rating of that, all right? Um, now, the difference between this decibel chart here and this one here, okay, we're back. All right, I, um, I do like the pause feature. Uh, sometimes I need to take care of stuff in the background. Um, all right, so one of the differences between this chart, or maybe a similarity, I guess, whatever, but you see is the negative, negative 20, negative 100, negative maybe 80 uh, decibels, all right. And this one here is measuring, this one is negative 75, all right. So you th see where our threshold is, all right, so you see our threshold from negative 75 to negative 15, and where we get into, you know, this area gets hot here. All right, you see some reds, some reds. This is different if you see the red on here 
And these colors on here, this is extremely important that you know the difference between one spectrum and the other is when you're looking at it that all the colors on all the spectrograms aren't all the same. If you, if you, a person, you, whoever you may be, have the idea that the colors represent 5D, 3D ascension, white light ascension, energy, 6D, 7, whatever silliness that you have associated with the color value, and I've seen them, I've seen the bad, the bad information, and I, I make mention of it <clears throat> as it comes up with people. That, that that's not what he, there is a um, chrome chromograph. Um, I think that's the name of detecting the what the light, the white balance of the light. There is an actual machine that can detect the white white light, literally can detect white light, that's not what the spectrograms do. So when people talk about the 5D ascension energy, the white light energy coming in from the Pleiadians, we'll just say, for example, to pick a random, completely, totally random, unrelated example to anything I've, I've ever seen, uh, we'll just make up something here. Um, for be, I'll be absurd for the sake of illustration, that when people say that, you know they are wrong because the, um, the spectrogram is not showing you the range of the white, certainly not the optical, certainly not the gamma. It is, there are certain parameters that, that each spectrogram has relative to its, its input parameters. Um, I think I use parameters twice, but, um, you know, there is a, a range of data that the, the spectrograms are showing you, and the, the incoming white light, whether it's gamma or whatever, it's 6D, you know, are you talking about dimension or density, right? It makes a difference. I have said this before, I've talked about this before, that with the, with the time, the temporal density, the temporal is your dimension. That's the time, density of time. It's not a density. It's what establishes your time construct. Then the horizontals are, are spatial. Yet, yet, not all of the spectrograms are showing you the same thing. So it's important to know what you're looking at with Tomsk as well as with the other antenna makers. <clears throat> Excuse me what the data is that you're seeing, okay? And so that's why I I like this particular article by Pierluigi Poggi, uh, Poggi, um, however you pronounce the name properly, where with, with, he's talking about um, uh, there's two different um, uh, there's two different spectros within that that I can pull from that you get uh, an idea of um, you know, the differences in the spectrograms and how to see them, how to read them. All right. So, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I think I'm going to start closing this video, uh, soon. I haven't gone to this article yet because this is, uh, this is an advanced article. Or, you know, it really is. And I think before, uh, you know, it's only fair that before I go into the, uh, an advanced article like this, you know, and I think I've made this mistake before. Um, I, I am trying to, you know, kind of always perfect what I've been doing, even if I present information that, that the class you all may have had before, it's important to review. It's a good review for me. If I'm reviewing it, then, then, you know, and I don't know everything that's there, then certainly for the rest of the class, it, it certainly could not be a bad thing at all. So, in other words, if I got a review, so too do you. Uh, I think that's a fair way to put it. Uh, my review is your review. Um, so, uh, so I have, um, I've read through most of this. Like I said, I've read through, through it um, and I've, enough to know it's, adv it's advanced. Uh, but it's fun. And a lot of colorful um, graphs to it. 
Um, so one, once again, like I said, I'm not, um, I'm not actually going to start reading through this, uh, cause it's a little longer, uh, little, one of the, you know, little longer, uh, ones that, um, it's probably going to be like 40, 45 minute video going through it. Um, cause I don't want to just read it. I also, you know, make it relevant to the tops, the one, the most common, the one most common uh Schumann that um everyone knows is here uh from from Tomsk so I always have to kind of um especially for the the sake of the newcomers and the people just coming into this that uh this may be you know I try to remember this may be someone's first video who doesn't know what the Schumann is like all right so I I, I try not to get too far afield on any one of the topics and um you know, at least at least this is the way I see it. That that's why a lot of these videos are kind of on the longer side, is because I do try to take some time to help uh, decrypt and decipher some stuff that is technical. And and I I know I I need it for myself. I I move at a rate that I, as a normal person, could could kind of comprehend this stuff. Um, and um, Yet, yet even still, it's like, well, I'm the most advanced of the class, you know, it's like, so I know I'm moving, you know, if I'm moving too far ahead and too fast ahead, I need people, I need you all to, to let me know, um, you know, this is just too much, you know, when I, when I get the question, specific questions from people and I get the tenor of what's, you know, the sense of what's, uh, being learned by my few key students uh, who chime up regularly, um, uh, then I get a sense of how complicated, you know, I, it, it is or, or I have made it into it being the subject matter. Um, okay. So, um, all right. So I'll... Uh, that's why I, I um, like people to comment and give me specific comment and feedback so I know where to kind of address the next uh, portion of, of the lesson. Or in some cases, just where to direct me in, entirely in certain things I hadn't really thought of before. Um, uh, and just, I think, as kind of a side note, um, I am intending on doing more live streams. Uh, first, I need to get kind of the hardware and everything together. It's an added layer of complexity, as I put in one of the notes. Um, and I like doing it with Alex as well, because he, um, Alex, has a guitar and he has some entertainment to offer. And it's, um, you know, he likes good kind of songs and... Uh, so it's a good positive message that he has to, to offer. Um, all right. So um, so I'm just going to kind of go to the most recent human resonance chart graph. All right. I'm going to end, um, you know, this is the observations. So I'll give you the observations for today. All right. So one of the things we're looking at with, with uh Tomps because they don't have the temp the uh, the decibel um, they don't have the decibel color scheme over here that I've shown again this is spectro <clears throat> so what we're looking at is how we're deriving these colors in here is you have to look at which direction it's basically which direction that we're going in we have a spike these are our are our uprights. This is the amplitude. Amplitude is the electric portion. It's the height of the, or the electric side of the electromagnetics. Right. So you see here's a big spike that was up to 24. The spike here is up to uh, 15.6. These are Pico electro volts. Okay, this is the amplitude portion. Okay, so this is the particle part of the program, if you will. Okay. Um, you see the peaks here. You line up the peaks. That's 18.8 there. Uh, red is over here. Red is 3, mode 3. 
Let's peek here. Do, 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 do. That's 5.76. And then you have the green. This is mode 4. Uh, you have that peak at 3.88. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. And so the quality is magnetic. All right. So this, these are the amplitude is the upright. The magnetics, this is what creates these lines here, these horizontal lines. You have to literally read between the lines to see where the colors are. Okay. So I have phrases kind of for each zone uh, based on the, the, the kind of color that we're looking at. This is a dark green or into a maroon here, the, this band with here. This is the the uh, the earthbound and adobe kind of color. You'd get that a dun brown, brownish kind of, um, you know, basically green and uh, green and red together will give you brown. Okay, if you mix it up. And I have shown pixel by pixel in, in past videos of actual brown color in there, and that would be the two modes together of the green and red. That would be, uh, and again, this is all going horizontally. All this stuff here is vertical, bouncing, 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 bouncing. Every single one of these is a spike. Every single one of these going this way is an amplitude spike. Okay. Now, hop down here to quality. This is all going away and to you immediately, okay, along the ground. It's horizontal. These are the horizontals. So if you see these white spikes with the, the um, or I'm sorry, let me kind of move down here. All right. So the red, sorry. Woo. So the red and the, uh, the yellow will give you orange, right? They're perfectly in the middle. It will give you a pumpkin orange, okay? So this is what I call mid-grade magnetics, is where you get on the chart these bands here. And you can just barely see this activity here. It's not much green, but it is the rust color, of these two together, right? So you can see these uh, peaks are kind of coloring it in horizontally, okay? The amplitude moves vertically, the quality moves horizontally. So these are your pumpkin orange colors. Uh, rust would be in here. Rust is sort of down there. Orange, pumpkin-y, sunflower colors up there. All right. So the two of these, the white and the yellow, the white and the yellow are what I call white mode, the angel mode. All right. This is your so, so quote-unquote, so-called 5D Ascension energy. <clears throat> okay. It's the white stuff. But again, this is the horizontal, not the vertical. A different thing happens here. It's a same, but a different thing happens here with this. You see the spike of the white. It's not red. This is not red colored. This is not green colored. This is, you know, white and yellowish kind of color blasting through the, the still of the background. All right. So, um, so, but this is a rating of decibel, okay? You don't have it. This top spectrum from Tom's does not have it, but I assure you, represented, but I assure you, it is the, on the decibel meter here. This is not the hertz. You see what they do? They put in the decibel and the hertz together there. Hopefully you can see that. This is really important for people to see that, that it's not... You know, there is a, a, a frequency value, a hertz value, that goes with the decibel meter as well, okay? This is really important for people to understand this and know this, that it is not, these spikes are not a spike of frequency. This is a spike of amplitude, and it's of relative field strength, comma, ergo est, decibel, okay? And that's what this whole thing is about, is showing you the, the, the similarities and the differences between the two and how to read one and not freak out about the other. Uh, I think it's a fair way to put it, maybe. I don't know. All right. So, and you'll see this here. This is white air. They're showing you this dropped out. 
right? The signal has dropped out to nothing, right? Well, I don't say nothing. That's not right. that's not correct. But at to the bottom of where it meters out, okay? Bottomed out the meter. <clears throat> I think that's a fair way to put it. All right. So, um, so these are your horizontals. These measure your your um, resonant harmonics in the Pico Tesla scale. Okay. Uh, it's important to note that as you move this way, the Pico Teslas move into bigger values as well. Okay, they they move from Pico to Nano Teslas. All right, the atmosphere of the Earth is charged from the Sun. That's measured, you know, on the the KP index. That's measured in Nano Teslas, which are like a thousand Pico Teslas, a Nano Tesla. All right. And a pico is negative 15. It's point, you know, it's like point one uh, to the, you know, negative 15th. You know, if you know how scientific notation works. Um, uh, nano is like negative 12 zeros. All right. Um, all right. So, um, so when we're looking at, you know, at the chart, it's important to see which direction because, you know, it's either amplitude or uh, which are electrics or the, the, um, the magnetics which move in waves. And the two of those forces affect you in different ways. They both affect you. Some will be affected more from one side, the more electric side, and some more from the magnetic side. Okay, the um, just, I think, a simple kind of rule of thumb is the the electrics are picture a uh, I don't know uh, maybe that's not I, that might not be the best uh, example of it. so um, if you're um you think of like your head as being affected by the electrics you know there's a lot of in your head a lot of electrical activity causing thoughts to work and so the electrics will affect your your thinking, cognition errors, you know, uh, you're, you're not clear thinking, it's fuzzy, you forget stuff. Um, those are the electrics. Uh, the, um, your sense of balance is caused, like the vertigo thing, that would be caused by the piezoelectric of the inner ear. Okay, so that's what a lot of these, um, you know, the electric part of the, uh, the symphony, you know, um, Poggi symphony, uh, you know, like, um, and then the magnetic portion is this right here. The magnetics is where it starts getting into a wave and you can feel it. All right? So the electrics affect your thinking, the mental nerves and you'd also like like it feels like um, like sharp stabbing pain a lot of times um, for the electric portion of the nerves and it sent fire is like for, for me it sends you know like I can feel my muscles twitching like there's a I can feel it's like Morse code tapping on my my leg um, I know I know that'll be heavy electrics um, uh, but then like the nausea like you're the, the pit of the stomach. Okay, when we start getting into the ringing of the ears, that's where the densities. We move from dimension into density. So dimensions, the temporal, the mind. Um, it's where the time scales start. Where you start losing time. Uh, it's where where quantum time will start kicking in. Five D time is five dimension. Time. So that's you're moving outside of, you're, you're going from linear to nonlinear into like quantum time where stuff just appears, right? Um, and then there's time beyond human reckoning, which is clock based. So 4D, four dimension, is where you start getting, you, 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 the clock stops losing meaning, time moves backwards. Uh, 5D is heaven, it's different, angels time, it's different time. Uh, whereas density, you start at first, second, third density, then you move up. Density is not, 
time is not a density uh, scale, um, but the density itself is spatial and you're physical. It's a, that's how the difference between the two. The amplitude is temporal, mind, mental, electric, sharp thoughts, the sending out of it, bing, bing. Whereas the return comes back as a wave. You know, it's the feminine side of it. You know, so it gets sent out as the mental aspect and then gets received and returned as a wave on the feminine. And so that's the difference. The, the amplitude is quick, sharp, bang, bang, bang. The harmonics move over time. The harmonics, uh, I'm sorry, the, the magnetics always move on time, move across time, move through time. They're time less, I guess you will, sort of, because they're density. Time is, is, is imposed by the electrics, depending on the, sh the, the strength of the field. And so this here is the lesser of the electric field of, of the program, this particular, the nano, uh, I'm sorry, the pico, pico uh, electron volts, the tiny as opposed to the Earth's current and the, the connection with the sun, which is nano, nano uh, um, Teslas. It's a much different, bigger, broader scale than these guys. Again, 1,000 picos equals a nano, okay? Or 1,000th of a nano equals a pico. And this, again, the pico scale is what the Schumann resonance is, is measured on. So, um, all right, so that was a lot, I think, to take in. I just kind of diverged into uh, the dimensions and the densities, but th some of y'all are ready for this shit, quite honestly, you know. Um, there's a few of you I know that watch, this all, watch these all the way through, and, and there are a couple of you I know that go back and watch over it. So this is one of those ones y'all are going to have to go back over maybe a few times, but... Feel free to leave comments, ask questions. I'm in this with you. That's why I'm showing my face and going eye to eye with the camera because it's important that, that you know that I'm here with you in this. It's all very complicated. And as long as I'm pulling in a, a, a living breath and I have oxygen running through my lungs, um, I will be here helping people with this uh, because it's time. And... Um, I guess on a kind of closing side note, a lot of this stuff that I'm divulging to you and talking to you about, especially here today, this one, um, uh, is stuff that drove me crazy when I was a, a teenager going through uh, puberty. It started the, 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 the um, uh, dimensions and the densities and everything started opening up and, you know, like they showed me the secret to a lot of what's, what's happening and it, it was... They're like, don't worry, you'll need this. I'm like, but I'm going crazy now. Can you make it stop? They're like, well, yeah, you just, you know, just trying to assimilate it the best you can, and it'll drive you less crazy that way. Um, acid helps, and mushrooms help as well. Um, anyway, but but the, the right dosage of them, um, <clears throat> and the right kind. Um, uh I would just say as a, a general rule of thumb, where you get your psychedelics from uh, makes a big difference in the type of trip that you're going to have. Yeah. Know your source. Trust your source. If you don't have a good sense of feeling about the the entheogen you're, you're about to ingest, don't do it. <laughs> it's not worth the bad trip that you will potentially have. Uh, know your source. And in everything, in human affairs, it matters... You know, some things it matters less, you know, okay, but, you know, you can maybe trust on someone else's good graces to follow you through um, and counteract your own, you know, idiocy, whatever. But uh, generally speaking, um, you know, the, the especially with psychedelics or, or something that's going to take you out there, um, you know, if the person giving it to you hasn't been out there on the thing, whatever, and they can't tell you, then don't do it. And if they themselves are too far out there that, you know, like you're not following, you're not picking up what they're putting down, you know, don't follow along with them. Um, 
anyway, so, all right. So um, that's enough life lessons there on that. Uh, you know, know, know your dealer. Um, and, uh, um, and so I'm closing this up talking about um, uh, this, this part of the, uh, the discussion on the spectrogram on uh, I'm next, I honest to goodness, I, I promise you the next uh, lesson, uh, the next session, I will be talking about uh, this article here of uh, Schumann's uh, symphonies. And um, just for the record, no, they're not trying to play the Schumann uh, har harmonic, the Schumann resonances as music. I, I have to change that. Um, I think I was misleading in the heading. Uh, all right. So where we? Oh my! This, I'm actually at 45 minutes. All right, I really do need to close this. Um, all right. So thank you all for being here. If you've hung around this this far, um, I appreciate your um, your love and support. Like, comment, share, subscribe, um, share it. Um, you know, like people. If you've got something on this video, leave a comment. Um, hey, Joe, leave a comment. God damn, this was way too long. Um, or something, whatever, you know, but be nice, um, you know, uh, people read this, you know. Um, all right, so thank you all for being here. I appreciate this. Um, I was uh, not originally going to make this as long as I did. Um, um, so um, thank you all for being here. I appreciate everyone's um, time and your support. Um, have a great rest of your day. Um, and um, thank you very much. Namaste.